Pledge me to our Minnesota starting lineup. At point, number seven, Leisha Clarendon. Starting at power forward, number 12, Damiris Dantas. The other guard, number 21, Kayla McBride. At the other forward position, number 24, Nafisa Collier. Starting at center, number 34, Sylvia Fowles. The head coach of your home team. Let's hear for your Minnesota starters. Hello and welcome to this PK Sports presentation of the WNBA. In this game, we'll see the Phoenix Mercury going up against the Minnesota Lynx. With Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Well, when you look over the rosters of these teams, lots of experience. How important is having veterans? Well, experience, you just mentioned, it takes time and it allows players to recognize offenses, defenses, different sets, different locations, and you really can't throw anything new at older players. Yeah, and I like how the seasoned veterans are able to help develop younger players. They are huge for any locker room because they can impart a ton of wisdom. And so she earns a trip to the line. The official saw the contact and shoots her two. And discussing the Brazilian Gamira Santos, you gotta love her unselfish attitude. She's just someone that's willing to do it all for her team. Well, sometimes Dantas starts, other times she comes off the bench. She's ready to contribute whenever her name is called. Well, now Dantas is, is a veteran in this league, has a strong understanding for her strengths, and she plays to those so well. This team really loves having her. Now here's Collier. Pass to Clarendon. <laughs> Diana Taurasi grabs the miss. She's a very strong finisher, guys. I'm surprised that she wasn't able to power that through the defense. Buries it from three-point range. Accurate, quick, soft. It's a thing of beauty. It's a Diana Taurasi made three. Here's Dantas. That falls. Great assist by Kayla McBride. She really had her eyes open. It's just good vision when you can see the open shot outside and get it to your teammate that has that look. Megan Smith's shot is off. A real defensive lapse there. She's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. They're lucky she didn't punish him there. Now here's Clarendon. And here's Kayla McBride from the arc. Sinks it. What range from downtown. Yeah, the determination to score from that distance comes from McBride's unwavering commitment to being the best. Turner with the ball. Clarendon covering. Pass to Diggins Smith. Shot clock at six. Cans the shot from the wing. And around two minutes played here in the first quarter. To the middle. Fouls. She gets it in there. What power from Fowles there. Embraces the contact and still figures out how to score. Pass to Nurse. Over Collier. And a shot by Nurse. No good. Here's Minnesota. A yeah, four-point game. Dantas with it. And that'll be Minnesota's ball as it goes out of bounds. Leans able to keep the ball here. If you're just tuning in, we've played about two and a half minutes here in the first. The three... Another three for Minnesota. That's just great ball movement. And that's key this run. Passing it with a purpose. The D has not been able to keep up. Oh, you're with it. And here in the first, uh, about three minutes in. 
Chaka. Ooh, right there. They've been hot here early, dropping them in left and right. Yeah, we'll see how long they can keep it going. So it's both teams making substitutions here. In for the Mercury. The Mercury trail. Two minutes remaining in the first. Two minutes. And here's Williams. Here's Cunningham. And no good. The dry spell continuing for him. Here's Carlton. Fouls down low. That one drops for him. Well, I mean, it is still early, but they're getting pummeled on the glass. They've got to take a stand and commit to controlling their defensive backboards. These second chance buckets are killing them. And Brian, I want to see more effort. Me too. Here's Carlton. She's guarded by Griner. Fouls. That's good. I like their hustle here early. They've struck first on the offensive glass. Those second chance buckets really contributing to their lead. I don't know if we're ever going to find a better rebounder than Sylvia Fouts. She's a player that controls the boards every game she plays. Another three for Minnesota. It's been a fantastic opening quarter for them. Yeah, I mean, this is the lead they've jumped out to already. This is the start that coaches dream of. They're having trouble stopping this run. And you know, the more trips they continue to come up empty, the more the pressure builds on them. Here's Petty. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. I'm not the biggest fan of that shot, but guess what? She had the space to get it off, so why not? Now here's Powers. Goes up at the elbow. Again, Minnesota. This defense looking soft early on. They've got to summon a little more energy and urgency. Yeah, they've got to do a little more to disrupt their rhythm offensively. And she should thank the D for those two points. Nobody really paying much attention to her there. Pass to fouls. Back to powers. Dangerfield outside. And the links another three. It has taken them no time to build this lead up. Great first quarter for them offensively. Yeah, but they can't sit back. They need to keep the pressure on the defense and really try to put this one away early. That's Great point, Brian. You have to continue to build on this lead. And as we conclude the first Ten. quarter, a one-sided game so far. Links ahead. Get ready for the deep squad. Well, not exactly a neck-and-neck -neck game, but as the second quarter starts, there is plenty of time for a comeback. And for the Lynx, this has been the game they wanted to have. Not much room to operate on this one. A very tough D through one. You know, they haven't given up a lot of easy chances at all. And here's Diana Taurasi from the arc. Fouls with the rebound. Dangerfield outside. On the wing, Kayla McBride. Floats one up. Oh, you're down to five on the shot clock. Second chance shot. Achanwa, good. They're fighting lanes to the hoop every time down. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. Or at least some fight. Yeah, Tarasi gets the bucket. Fluid, confident, and overall reliable in catch and shoot situations. That's part of what makes Tarasi an offensive juggernaut. Pass the fouls. The offensive board. And finally, they hit one. A huge part of her game, the O-board. Achunwa's been a top three in the league in offensive rebound. Here's Petty. That shot, no good. Good defense there by Crystal Dangerfield. And still plenty of basketball to be played. But, Brian, is it too early to tell who the championship-level teams are? Maybe, but I think the title teams... They're consistent throughout the season. So getting out of the gates fast really helps. Well, a 
I'm going to disagree a little here. Yeah, it might be shocking for you, Brian. But uh, there could be a blockbuster trade out there, a major injury. So we just don't know what teams will, will look like come Isn't playoff it time. I, I just think it's too early to tell. Both teams will make substitutions. And so here's Phoenix. Reiner inside, covered by fouls. Diggins Smith with the bucket. Well, with her height, Reiner, a clear view of the court, it allows her to spot open teammates. Right outside. Out to the left wing. Here's Clarendon. And the links, another three. The rapid fire threes coming from everywhere. I wasn't sure they should try to get the three right back like that, but hey, it worked out for them. Shot by Tarasi, no good. And here's Kayla McBride from the arc. Another three for Minnesota. Triples keep on falling, guys. Three in a row now. These defenders can't stay so soft on the perimeter. One place Kayla McBride always takes care of business, the free throw line. She consistently sinks her foul shots, making the competition pay for every trip to the charity strike. So both teams making some changes here. And uh, here in the second quarter, about three minutes played. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Two minutes. Now here's Clarendon. Pass to Powers. Takes it from ten. Clock at six. Clarendon guarded by Diggins Smith. Shepper can't get it to go. Averaging around 90% from the foul line has always kept Kayla McBride among the top WNBA players in that stat. If not at the top, she's ended seasons with a free throw percentage well over the 90% mark. I mean, she certainly is one of the best we've ever seen at the strike. Shoots the three. A nice shot by Powers. Now they're getting their points now almost exclusively from three-point range for the last five makes from beyond the arc. And the defense practically giving them those shots. And they'll take them. Griner shots good. Because of Griner's effort and enthusiasm on the boards, she's able to create second-chance buckets for her team. Outside Clarendon. Powers. Dantas. She's guarded by Griner. Bader on the way. And it's blocked by Brittany Griner. Well, I mean, you don't want to test Griner. No way. Incredible length and nasty streak. She set block records in the WNBA. Williams can't get it to go. And not only is their lead big, but their advantage on the boards is huge, too. They've been the aggressors, plain and simple, outworking them inside. Pass to Shepard. Excellent D there from Brittany Griner. Jacks up a three. Rebound by the Lynx. Now Shepard. A dominating first half of play, and so far it hasn't been close. Lynx ahead, just dominating this one. wasn't even close and we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third started mcbride with a strong contribution so far in this one her decision making simply flawless today nothing but quality shots from her in the first half she wasn't forcing anything yeah but i think here in the second half they may want her to be a little more assertive and start taking more shots even the tough ones down low. Fouls down low. Reiner's there. And she gets the bucket. Well, this is where Fowl strives. She loves getting the ball down low, close to the hoop. Now 
Here's Tarasi. Guarded closely. Yeah, yeah. Counted. Not enough bodies on the glass right there, and they paid for it. And it'll happen again and again if they don't put more effort in the boxing out. And that's what it's all about, Brian. Rebound. Effort. Outside Clarendon. For three, Kayla McBride connects from three-point range. Boy, Brian, that's five straight made three-pointers. The defense giving up a barrage. Most teams get the message to cover shooters after one or two wide-open threes, but they just aren't figuring it out. You go out there and tell them, Brian. Okay, maybe I will. Dantas, left side. A rebound by Brittany Griner. Since entering the league, Brittany Griner has been an absolute force on both ends of the ball. She'll go down as one of the most prolific defenders in WNBA history. Now a timeout called by Minnesota. And Griner's blocks numbers, whew, they're ridiculous. I mean, she was the WNBA blocks leader each of the first seven seasons of her career. Yeah, already top three all-time in career blocks. And I'd be willing to bet that uh, maybe by the end of her career, Brittany Griner, the all-time leader in blocks in league history. Plenty of daylight on that shot. Can they make some sort of defensive adjustment? Because guess what? She is killing them from three-point range. And even when they have closed out on her, she's still knocking them down. I mean, this is just an unbelievable performance we're seeing right now. And the official signal of backcourt violation, not being careful there. That's only their first turnover of the game, taking terrific care of the ball. One more key to their lead. Uh, they're creating opportunities for each other and not the other team. And the basket yeah, by Tarasi. Yeah, Her scoring Three. this quarter has been off the charts, doing all she can to bring them back. One item that stood out is their ball movement. Things are definitely clicking, and more importantly, it's tough to defend. Fouls. The second chance effort. And another shot. And that's two points on the layup. When they've gone to her, she's come through. Keep getting her touches. First outside. This one for three. Ooh, no luck on that one. The links go the other way with it. Right outside. Pass to Dangerfield. That falls. Three of these by Gary Bride. I want to make it as a, a WNBA player at the guard position. You need a deep shot like this. And now we're three minutes into this third quarter of play. Two minutes from now, here is Turner. Two minutes. It's over at Chamwa. And some very quick points for them on that possession. They're on track here in the second half after a very, uh, very shaky first. Their field goal percentage is steadily climbing. They, they couldn't make anything in the first half. Powers can't connect from short range. The D was ready for her that time, and they had to be. She is strong in the bank. Three, Diana Tarasi. The shot, no good. And Minnesota the other way now. Pass to fouls. Add basket number six for stat sheet. Six for ten. A sound score like fouls has to be able to score buckets through some contact. And really, she's as resilient as they come. Reiner, no good. Can't get a much better look than that. Yeah, no way you expect her to miss that shot. Pass to fouls. An easy two points on the layup. This defense is getting eaten up on the inside, guys. Giving up far too many free runs to the rim. And they haven't been able to return the favor. Their offense in the paint hasn't Shea been up Penny. to mark. Okay, nice job here in the second half. Their field goal percentage is way up from what it was at halftime when it was just barely above 30%. Releases again to Minnesota. That's the third bucket in a row from the paint. And I know nobody likes a traffic jam, but this defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle. Yeah, nobody likes the traffic jam. We can agree on that. They can't allow the offense to get those high-quality looks inside. 
Just two seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Rossi with the steal. Takes the three. And it's Dangerfield with the rebound. And now the Lynx fast break. Some room here for aerial powers. Good. And yes, this goes to Crystal Dangerfield. Starting to pull away here. They're putting some points up. Yeah, this one's threatening to get out of hand pretty soon. And three quarters of play That's in the hitting. books. This one's all but over already. Lynx ahead. Delivering the blowout. And when we return, we'll get the fourth quarter rolling here on 2K Sports. And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist of the game. Slice the deep wide open with this speed. So they really had no chance to prevent this basket. Yeah, it was a great read of the defensive setup and also wonderful anticipation of the movement of her teammates before the pass. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. Good feed by Foul. She's normally more of a finisher, but she also has the awareness to find open teammates. Here's Smith. No good off the back of the rim. Now the Lynx with it. Outside Clarendon. With the WNBA passing the 25th season mark, I love to put you guys on the spot. So here we go. Which is the best team in league history? I'm going to take it way back on you two and bring up the 2000 Houston so team. They won the title for the fourth straight year and were one of the most efficient teams offensively of all time. Give me the 2019 Mystics. They also won a title, finishing with the best offensive rating in history. Well, what's most impressive, they set a league record with 12 wins by 20 or more points. You don't see a lot of those. I mean, they just dominated the competition. Outside Williams. Off target from three point range. She has slipped into a real funk here. Definitely. The basket is not looking very big to her. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Such a pretty pass. I don't have an exact number for you, but I can tell you it's. We've seen it a lot. Okay, let's just say that. Strictly using assists as the measuring stick, they've been by far the better team. But they'll get another chance. And the foul called on Collier. Nafisa Collier. That's her first foul. So first both team teams foul. changing it up here. Into the lineup for Phoenix. Last quarter of play, about two minutes in now. And again, Phoenix no good. She's going to play her way right onto the bench if she continues to shoot the ball like she has this quarter. Big ride up top. Dantas from 15 feet away, that one falls. A big lead becomes bigger. They are playing with purpose, guys. And that goes for both ends of the floor. They've been controlling the action everywhere. Just dominant. The three-pointer is on target. Every single team in the WNBA wants shooters like Megan Walker, especially from the wing where she can stretch out the defense. Steps back. Pass to Shepard. To the wing, right side. Another three for Minnesota. How about that? Responding to the three-pointer against them with a quick one of their own. Yeah, terrific little back and forth right there, Tim. It's been a lot of fun to watch. And here are the links now. So far in the fourth quarter, they've allowed just six points. Right outside. Dantas in the post. Pass to Shepard. From past the arc. That shot missing. And it's Phoenix the other way. Right side, Williams. And it's good for two. The assist, Alana Smith. Over three and a half minutes through the final quarter now. Collier outside. Back to Clarendon. 
Dantas outside. McBride up top. Six to shoot. Back to Dantas. That falls. Great assist by Gary McBride. Love the quick thinking from Dantas. Gets a clean look and lets it fly. Here's Cunningham. The shot, no good. And they're in complete control. Everything they're doing, it's been working out. Wow. That's a frustration foul right there. And that's not her best moment. Obviously, no one on their team is happy right now, but you shouldn't be taking it out on your opponent. Pass to Carlton. Now Powers. From deep. And it's Vaughn with the rebound. Shot and game clock separated by five. It's Gabby Williams on the wing, guarded by Dangerfield. Here's Minnesota. Outside Powers. So we see the Lynx taking the W here. They poured it on tonight. A dominant showing in front of a crowd that loved Thank you every minute of This game really a defining game. You know, what they can do when they're playing at their best. Being here at home helps, but, but the execution anywhere was terrific. And that'll wrap it up.